Inverse functions here. Inverse functions, range and domains. Standard method for inverse functions, what we do is we write y equals then we simply swap the x for the y and to see our inverse function properly we make y the subject Natural logarithm will be the thing to undo this e to the power. Logarithm of e, and that's gone, leaves us with the y minus 11. And so y equals and that's our inverse function, so our inverse function is there. Second part of this question asks us about domain. Now if we have a domain numbers into our function then numbers out would be our range and I say this because quite often if you're asked about a domain of an inverse function what is key is what came out of the original. So the domain of the inverse quite simply is the range of the original. So this question is equivalent to saying what is the range of our original function. And to do that what I'd like to think about is I'd like to think about transformations. First of all graph of e to the power x looks like that. If I then do e to the power x minus 11, this is a translation. This moves it along 11 horizontally. And then finally, if I look at x, minus 11 is our power, and then minus 8. What will happen? I've, let me just grab myself a little bit of room there. You kind of get the picture. What happens is that this graph drops down, minus 8, I get a new translation. And whereas the asymptote here, everything was above 0, above 0, here now, the range, what's coming out of this function, the y values, are above negative 8. So the range of my original was greater than negative 8, which means the domain of my inverse must be exactly that. So the domain of my inverse is what came out of my original and so what I can put in my inverse the domain is quite simply x has got to be greater than negative 8. There we go. Domain of inverse was the range of the original and that's done.